you are this blade of grass. Now look around you. Each year, 150,000 college freshmen step onto campus each year in the US with the dream of becoming a doctor. You are one of thousands. And before you even apply to med school, nearly two thirds of your peers will be gone. That leaves only about 52,000 students who actually take the leap and apply. And less than half of those, just 23,156, will actually get in. And just like a blade of grass among 52,000 others, I just submitted my AMCAS application mere minutes ago. All 17 pages. <laughs> Four years led to a single click. Wow. I'll be honest with you. As a first-generation four-year college graduate, I didn't have much help navigating this journey. No one in my family could get me shadowing hours, explain what the MCAT is, or guide me in how to tell my story in 5,300 characters. You might be in that same spot. Or maybe you're here because you're aware of just how daunting this med school application process is. So in this video, I want to share with you the roadmap I wish I had. I don't want you feeling like a single blade of grass, much like I did at one time in a sea of many more students, much more qualified than I. I want you to see yourself as someone worthy of medical school. And so I made this video inspired by a book I wrote, which features nine keys to unlock high school. Unlike high school, I have something much more valuable for you. And so I introduce nine keys to unlock med school. This is the truth about pre-med. If you look at the AAMC's website, you'll find a list of 17 pre-med competencies to get accepted. And if you're like me, you didn't know about them till you started applying. But that's beside the point. If you read them, it can feel discouraging. I'm not a perfect person, but reading these, sometimes it feels like I need to be to get accepted into medical school. Sound familiar? 4.0 GPA, 520 MCAT score, 1,000 hours of volunteering, 800 hours of clinical shadowing, impactful stories of reaching community, speaking seven languages to social, cultural humility and diversity. It can feel daunting. It can feel hopeless at times. In this video, I want to share the raw, unfiltered truth about being a pre-med from someone who's endured four years of it. The mistakes I've made, the lessons I learned, and the nine keys I wish someone had handed me when I began as that scared, wide-eyed freshman. These are the lessons that helped me survive the AMCAS and Lord willing, get me accepted. Key one, know the game before you play. Most pre-meds start too late. I did. It wasn't until junior year of college that I seriously began studying what the AAMC would ask me in the AMCAS, that med school application. If you're a college freshman or even a high school senior, begin learning what the application will ask of you. From the works and activities section to the personal statement, also known as the personal comment section, and everything else. If you understand the application, then you can implement the keys I have later in this video. And when you begin researching medical schools, please use MSAR. It's the Medical School Admissions Requirements Database. And that site alone saved me hundreds of hours of countless time researching med schools and just don't apply blindly. Let the data guide your decision, not your ego. Don't apply to the most prestigious school. We're all thinking the same thing. Harvard's great, we know. That MD degree from Harvard will look great on your wall but apply where your story fits. I created a spreadsheet to track which schools I was applying to based on statistics, mission statements, and how many number of students from my college were accepted there. I'll leave a link to that spreadsheet in the description below. <laughs> and that's not even mentioning the DO schools I'm applying to, but let's save that for another video. Key two, your story starts now. Journal it. Every shadowing hour, every conversation, every act of service, Document it. Respecting HIPAA, of course. But not just what you did, but how it changed you. I kept a journal, and so when I went to sit down and write my work and activity section, all my important moments were right there for me to reference. In that journal, I processed things like the moment a homeless man asked me to listen to patients when I become a doctor, or the moment when I ended up cleaning up feces at 3 a.m. in an assisted living home that taught me more about human dignity than any class ever had. Write down the things that move you and the things that don't, because one day they might. Key three, learn to tell stories, 
not just stats. And here's the secret. The best stories map directly onto the AAMC's 17 pre-med competencies. Teamwork, resilience, service orientation. I didn't start practicing these until my senior year when I was writing this application. I began telling stories in college clubs with friends and family here on YouTube. When you watch or listen to something that moves you, ask why. Discover how to evoke pathos and craft stories that resonate. Med schools don't just want to know that you worked 400 hours in a hospital. They want to know why it mattered, what you learned, who you became. Here's an excerpt from my personal statement that should help drive this point home. A few months later, I found myself in Columbia, South Carolina, training at Moncrief Army Health Clinic. It was 90 degrees and humid, but the weight of the work was heavier than the heat. One soldier died on base while I was there. Another suspected suicide. It brought me right back to Fort Harrison. Two names, two bases, one unheeded cry. I shadowed Dr. M, a military psychiatrist who openly shared how even the most skilled providers can miss warning signs. We try, he told me, but often we don't know. That honesty shaped me more than any textbook ever could. Those details didn't just say that I shadowed a military psychiatrist. In context of my overall personal statement, that moment shared my story. If you can remember moments that made you feel something, then you're halfway to a good story. You can pick the easy route to med school. <laughs> Who am I kidding? There's no easy route to med school. But checking boxes is about as close as you can come. 400 clinical hours? Check. 1,000 hours of volunteering? Check. 520 MCAT? Check. Wow, that's a good score. But if you're honest with yourself, do you actually care to do those things? Army ROTC, Operation 22, bodybuilding, none of those were easy for me, but they gave my story depth and direction. Purpose is what kept me going when I wanted to quit. And guess what? Those hard things, they became the core of my med school application. One service member took his life near my college campus. It wrecked me. I didn't know him but I felt him. That pain led me to organize a 22 mile Ruck March fundraiser across Montana to honor veteran lives and prevent suicide. I walked through that mission because God put it on my heart. There's a sanctity to life. And that purpose, it became my why. Because when everything else feels like it's too much, that why will sustain you. I can't just tell you, find your why, because it's not that simple. But if you push your limits, you will often be forced to look deeper inside to see what makes you, you. Scary, right? <laughs> but often finding your why is in those growing moments. I want to take a quick cartwheel break and say that if you have any questions about the entire pre-med process that you want answered, then please join my new YouTube community page and consider subscribing. Now, back to the fifth key, key five. Be relational, not isolated. Unlike my digital persona may convey, I'm pretty introverted. But the truth is, I need people and you need people. When I was unsure how to shadow doctors, I asked my community. When I still couldn't get in anywhere, I cold emailed doctors, NPs, and PAs just to get my foot in the door and then followed up. One crazy cool story is that a provider invited me via the Carroll College Pre-Med Club to a social event where I ended up meeting 23 doctors, got to hear some really cool airplane cardiology stories, and it resulted in me getting seven shadowing offers. And all from one night, all because I asked, stepped into a room and showed up. My advice, talk to other pre-meds, Talk to current med students, talk to doctors, get involved in your community. Don't be an island. I'm preaching to myself right now, sorry. But community is ultimately what kept me going when burnout and doubt crept in. The truth is you're not meant to carry this alone. And if you've seen my Mark Wahlberg video, one conversation can literally change everything. Key number six, shadowing doesn't find you, hunt it. I felt like I was behind the curve. 
I didn't get real shadowing until the end of my sophomore year of college. COVID delayed everything. But when the door finally cracked open, I kicked it in. <laughs> I became an EMT through a nine week course. I cold emailed, cold called, followed up, went anywhere that there was any chance that I could get some shadowing opportunities. I even made a business card, just anything, trying to impress doctors or try to get my foot in the door. And the truth is, you have to hunt it. Shadowing was probably the first question I had as a pre-med student of saying, how do I do this? When I literally had no one in my family who is healthcare related in that way, and I had no resources to try to use to get me into a hospital or other clinical setting. From emergency medicine to behavioral health to oncology, every clinical setting I entered, I learned something new. But the most important lesson was that no one will just hand you a shadowing opportunity. Or if they somehow do for you, amazing. But if you're like me, you have to pursue it, have to hunt it. And when you finally get an opportunity, don't just observe, absorb, ask questions, take notes, and refer back to key number two. Key seven, embrace the suck. If there's one thing I've learned in my army training, it's to get comfortable being uncomfortable and embrace the suck. Because the truth is, medicine is messy. It's political, it's personal. It's not black or white. And I was a pretty black or white type of person. I'll admit it. But I stepped into roles where I acted out vaccine hesitancy, child abuse, human trafficking, in health acting events in college. And I sat in on army briefings about mass shootings and mental health failures. Those experiences broke me and built me. They prepared me to serve in uncomfortable places with empathy. By no means do you need to be a moral expert, but you do need to be willing to wrestle with real life complexities. If your heart hurts while learning, good, because it sounds like you're pursuing the right career space and you're human. Key eight, build guardrails against burnout. The road to med school is long. You'll lose sleep, you'll question your worth, You'll get back disappointing grades. You'll sacrifice relationships. I did. But I don't want you being like just another blade of grass, growing beautiful and strong and photosynthesizing light and beautiful chloroplasts and creating derivatives of glucose just to be stomped out by my neighbor's cow. I want you to thrive in med school and beyond. I can think back to not long ago when I was staring at my physics homework or preparing for the MCAT and just thinking to myself, why am I doing this to myself? Coming back after a hard exam and just sitting in my car and death gripping the steering wheel and saying, is this even worth it? I've received grades that made me rethink everything. Again, physics. <laughs> the truth is, it's not glamorous, it's grinding. So build guardrails. Now, for me, that meant training my body in the gym for my physical health, leaning into faith and leading Bible studies with Chi Alpha for my spiritual health, and journaling, resting, spending time in community, and making YouTube videos for my mental health. Don't wait to crash before you start healing. Get ahead of it. We both wanna be doctors, but how can we do that well if the patients that we're treating who are sick are no different from us? who's sick in the mind, spiritually or physically. We need to stay ahead and stay healthy. And when you fall, get back up, because you will fall. But if you look in the right places, there will be people to support you when you need them most. Key nine, you don't need to be perfect, just purposeful. I hope by now you understand you are not just a single blade of grass. You are not your MCAT score, or your GPA, or your rejection. Don't compare yourself to others on Reddit or Student Doctor Network. As C.S. Lewis says, comparison is the thief of all joy, and it stands true. I thought I had to be perfect, but the truth is medical schools aren't looking for that, and that's encouraging. They're looking for progress, for self-awareness, for humility. Think back to the 17 pre-med competencies. Those competencies aren't a checklist, they're a mirror. When I finally stopped performing and started reflecting, I became someone worth accepting. And this can be sobering. 
you're not applying to prove you're perfect. You're applying to prove you're becoming. I think it's helpful to think about who you envision as a good doctor, someone you would trust as your personal doctor. If you don't see your character and traits reflecting that well, then I think it's a good litmus test to see what change and progress needs to be made until you finally reach that level where you can honestly say to yourself, wow, I trust you as my doctor. If you've made it this far, I have no doubt you've got what it takes for med school because you're invested in learning what it takes to succeed. Let's be one of those 23,156, shall we? In the description below, I've linked resources I've found or created over the past four years to help me walk this path with healing, purpose, and direction. And no matter where you are in your pre-med journey, one of the most important questions is, how can I become a doctor with as little debt as possible? If you're interested in learning about a unique opportunity I'm taking to graduate medical with zero debt, then watch this video right here. I'll see you there. Make each heartbeat count. Really quick, if you find this video or this cart really interesting, then please consider subscribing.